In this video, I want to take a look at one of the advantages of having plans as you're creating your models and how you might be able to avoid that painstaking task of cleaning up after Boolean modifiers. So let's get started. So the first thing I'll do is just press A to select everything and press delete and just delete them. So I'll come up here then to edit and preferences. I want to first enable a couple of add-ons. So in the add-ons tab here, scroll down a little bit, put a check mark in Archipack and I can expand this and I'm going to click on the documentation and that opens up a web browser. So I'm just going to drag this in here and have a quick look at this. So if I expand this for a second, I can come down here on the right hand side and I'm going to click on the material button here. And this gives me access to a default cycles material library that I'm going to download. So I'm going to click this. I'm just going to save this file, click OK. I'm just going to choose a folder and save that there. And when we still have the browser open, I'll come over to the second tab here. And this is on my website, blenderzen.com. If you go to the acid page and I scroll down here, there are some assets here for this tutorial. So you can download these. Again, I'm going to save these. I can choose the same location and just place them there. Okay, I'm going to minimize the web browser. And I'm just going to drag in an explorer window here. And this is the folder that I've saved both those files to. So this is the Archipack, the MATLAB material. I'm just going to click here, Control C to save this folder location. So Control C and back over here in the material library, I can press Control V. So that way, anytime Archipack adds an object to the scene, it's going to take the material from this library. Okay, the other thing I want to do is click on this house asset zip file that I downloaded from my website. I'm just going to right click and extract this. So zip7 extract files, click OK. And if I double click in here, there is a DFX file and an image file, and we'll be using these later. So I'm just going to drag this back out of the way. The other thing then on the add-ons tab is to render the preset thumbs. So I'm going to click render preset thumbs, and that way we get a preview image of the different assets that we're going to be adding to the scene. So I'm just going to click this and just confirm then to render this. And this might take a couple of minutes depending on your system. I'm just going to highlight this window. Okay, and when that's completed, I'm just going to minimize this. And that took over four minutes to render those. And that's it then for this add-on. There are other options to, to change some of the different styles here. What I might do is just put a check mark in constant handle size. That way, when you zoom in, it maintains the same size. Okay, so with this add-on enabled, I'm just going to minimize it. And I want to come down to the bottom here and just enable the loop tools add-on. So with this one here, put a check mark in mesh and loop tools. And I'm going to come over to the navigation tab and just put in a check mark into orbit around selection. That way you can orbit around the object you have selected. And I'm also going to put a check mark in zoom to mouse position. That way you can just zoom into the position of the cursor on screen. And finally, I'll come up to the interface tab and I'm just going to increase this resolution to maybe 1.3 approximately and with that then I can choose save preferences and I'm going to X this down. So the first thing I want to do is import the DXF file. So if I come up to file and import, I'm going to notice that we don't actually have a DXF format here. So what we'll need to do is come up to edit preferences and in the add-ons tab then we're going to have to enable that add-on. So I can scroll down here a little bit and look for the import export options. So hit this one here, import export DXF format. Okay, again, I can choose save preferences and I can X that down. So now if I come up to file, import and DXF, I'm gonna to come to the folder that I have that saved in, selected and just import that DXF. So with that in the scene, if I selected and tab into edit mode, you can see that it's a curve object. So I'm gonna tab back to object mode and with it selected, I'm gonna come up to object, come down here to convert and convert this mesh from curve, select this. So now if I tab into edit mode, you can see we have vertices instead of curves. So I'll tab back to object mode and I also want to add in that image. So I'm gonna press numpad one for front view. You can also press the apostrophe key and choose front from this pie menu here. I'm going to press shift A and come down here to image and choose background. And similar to before, I'm going to come back to that folder, select the house front view and choose load background image. And up here in the outliner, I'm going to double click this and just call this front view, press enter. And if I come over to the image options over here, I'm going to increase the size here. So I'm going to left click and drag in here 
and scale this up to the outline on the ground here. So I can get it approximately in position, press G to move it, press Z then just to restrict it to the Z axis and drag this down. And I can reduce that in size a little bit just to match up with, with the outline. So I can press and hold shift. So this scales in smaller increments. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in over here. And maybe just line that up to the center of the line approximately and zoom back out and press G, Z and just sit that on the line there. Okay, so that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to press and hold the middle mouse button just to come around. So what I want to do is add a wall along this side here, coming around the front and into here. So let's take a look at doing that. So I'm going to press N for the sidebar and just come down to the create tab and I'll choose wall. Okay, and that comes in to the scene at the position of the 3D cursor. So I'm just press and hold the middle mouse button and just rotate. I'm going to press R, Z and 180 to rotate it. And I'll come up here to the snapping menu and just click the drop down. I want to switch this to vertex. And now I'll press G, press and hold control and snap this over to this corner here. Okay, so I can left click. Okay, and I can come back around here. I'm gonna left click and drag this arrow here, press and hold control and snap this up to the outside corner. And I can rotate around. I'm gonna click the forward arrow here if I can make this out. So this arrow here, if I click it, grab this and drag it over and press and hold control and snap that there. And again, I can click the arrow, grab this and just snap it to the end point here. Okay, so that's my wall in position here. I'm going to press one for front view and maybe zoom in. And if I come over to the Archipack tab on the sidebar here, I can increase the height. Now this is not too important. I just want to bring this up maybe above the window here. Okay, so I'm going to press Z for the shading menu and choose wireframe. I'm going to add in a window. So I might just press and hold shift and the right mouse button and just place the 3D cursor here roughly at this position. So again, if I come over to the create tab, I can choose a window. And because my thumbs are rendered, I can choose from any of these. So I'm going to maybe choose this one here. That brings a window into the scene. If I come over to the Archipack tab, then I get the properties associated with that window. So I can maybe drag this down in the altitude and sit it in position. So somewhere like this, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Maybe drag this back up slightly. I can increase the height to match that outline, maybe decrease the width and just adjust these until I'm happy. Okay. And then the other thing is if I come down to components, I can come down here to so for the sill, I'm just going to increase the width of this ticker, something like this, and maybe the height. So make that. I'm going to press and hold the middle mouse button. Just come around. Press Z and come into solid. Zoom in here. I might just give this a little bit of depth here. Okay, something like this. And maybe increase the height. Okay, again, I'm going to press 1 for front view. Press Z and come back in then to wireframe. So with this selected, I'll press and hold shift, select the windows section. And I can zoom in here, just shift select the second window. Okay, I might just press and hold the middle mouse button just to come around here. It's not selecting this other window. So with this selected, I can press one again, press shift D X and drag this across here and just position that. Okay, so now if I select the wall, I'm going to press and hold the middle mouse button. Come around, I can select this section, press Z and come back to solid. So over here then on the create tab, I'm going to choose Boolean and that's going to subtract then the window objects from the wall. So let's take a look at what you can do to tidy up these UVs. So if I come over to the modifiers tab here, what I'll do is apply the wall modifier and the auto boolean. And if I come up to UV editing, just gonna pan this across here, press A just to make sure it's all selected. I can press U and choose smart UV project and just click OK. And if I zoom in over here, on the UV grid, we can see we have a couple of little issues surrounding the window openings. Okay, and if we take a closer look at this, I can zoom in, I can press tree for face select. If I select this face here, you can see if I zoom out over here, take a look, you can see we have one large n-gon around the window opening. And that happens with the automatic boolean. It creates n-gons on your mesh. You really have to go around and tidy these up. Now, one thing we could do, if I press one, I could select maybe vertices like these two here, for example, and press J to join them. And I could create a four sided polygon here and I could go around and I could do something similar. I could maybe select these two up here. I could right click and choose subdivide. Maybe select this and this one here, press J and form another polygon. And I could do something similar right the way around. And it's quite time consuming to rebuild the mesh. Another way to do that is if I undo a couple of times, I'm going to press tree for face select. If I select this end gone and just press X and delete it, choose faces. I can come around here and I can take a look at maybe rebuilding it from scratch. So if I press one, 
what I can do is add in four more cuts here. So what I might do is actually use the control R to add in edge loops. Left click and I can right click. I can all select these ones, maybe scale them on the X to zero and maybe zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna press G, X and snap these over here. And now I can begin to join these up. So I can press F when I have these two selected and I can maybe select the next two, scale them on the X to zero, press G, X and snap these over here. Okay, so this would be the process to work your way around and just rebuild the mesh rather than trying to add in and join the different pieces. So if I press F on that, you can see that I'm gonna get nice clean polygons as I work my way around here. So I'll do the same thing here. I can select these two, scale them on the X to zero, G, X, and snap these across here, and then just begin to join up the next set. I can press F and then join them up to this face here, and I can work my way around. So let's just finish off this. So I'm gonna scale this on the X to zero, press G, X, and snap this across. Select these four, press F, and we have another end gone down here that I'll first delete. So I'm going to select this, press X and choose faces. A couple of edges on the back. I'm not going to worry about the back then for the moment. What I might do is select the back faces, press X and choose faces. So we can just rebuild then from here. So I'm going to switch back to vertex selection. Select these two vertices. And I want to add in two vertices extra on this. So I'll right click, subdivide. And down here then on my options, I'm going to increase that to two. What I might do is press the forward slash key just to isolate this so we can see it a little bit better away from the window. So with this, select these two here, press G, Z, snap that down. You can maybe select that, fill that in, select the next one, press G, Z, and I can fill these four in then with fill command. Okay, and I can repeat the process. Select these two and press F. And I'll have to go around then and do that for all of these. So you can see it's quite a slow process, but what you're gonna have at the end ultimately are quads and a nice tidy finished face. So I might just do the same thing here. I want to add in four edge cuts. So control R, maybe add those in. Select the first two, scale them on the X to zero. G, X, snap them across. And I can begin to fill these up. Okay, and I can just continue then around and fill these as I go. Next thing to do is maybe subdivide this or add in edge loops so I can add in an extra two here. Press G, Z, snap these down and fill this up. And finally, just all select these and fill them in. Okay, so we're left with nice tidy polygons. I'm gonna press A to select it all this time. Press U and choose Smart UV Project. Maybe give that a little bit of an island margin. So maybe 0.6, click OK. And now you can see we have nice tidy UVs for our object. And that's important if you want to export to a game engine. It's important to work through the model and clean that up, especially when you're using the likes of Boolean modifiers. So let's come back to the layout tab and I might just zoom out here a little bit. What I'm gonna do is maybe select this wall now and press G, X and just drag this forward. So the second option I wanted to look at was if you have created layouts, whether it's from DXF files or if you've created them in Blender using Mesh and how you can avoid having so much cleanup on your Mesh. So let's take a look at that. So with this object selected, I'm gonna tab into edit mode. So what I'm gonna do first is press seven for top view and maybe press two for edge selection. So what I'm gonna do is box select maybe the similar area that we created the last time. So maybe select these here and this end section over here. Okay, so, so if I zoom in over here, I might just press C and just middle click those two lines here. If I zoom in over here, press C and maybe, maybe just have this section selected. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna press P and choose separate by selection. And now if I press and hold the middle mouse button to come around, I'm gonna tab back to object mode, select this section, tab into edit mode. So now if I press one for vertex selection, I'm gonna press one for front view, and I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna press A to select everything, and maybe zoom in a little bit more. I'm gonna press E and Z to restrict it to the Z axis. And first off, I'll just drag this up maybe to here. I'm gonna press Z and come into wireframe, and press G. Z just to continue this up to the base of the window. So I actually might snap this up to there and I can press E again, press Z and I can snap it up maybe to the height of the window, something like this. I can zoom out a little bit, I can press E 
Z again and come up to the base of the window here approximately. Now before I go further with this one, we can see that there's a slight difference in the width here. So we could come around and maybe fix that up. So maybe for these vertices on this here, maybe press C just to make sure they're all selected. I can press one and zoom in a little bit. I can scale these on the X and I can continue then and extrude. I can zoom back out a little bit, press Alt A. I can box select then everything, press E, Z. And maybe just drag these up to the top here. We're not too concerned with anything else for the moment. I'm gonna press Z and come back to solid. Press and hold the middle mouse button just to come back around here. Press three. And now really all I need to do is select the faces here, press X and delete faces. And if I press the forward slash key just to isolate this object, I can press two. I can select these edges, press F, I can do the same thing here, select these, select these here, press F, and finally these two and press F. And actually this one here is gonna be a window also, so I'll just select them, press X, and choose faces. I can maybe fill that in with the F key. Okay, so any unnecessary faces, then we can just make sure you have them deleted. So internal faces, I'm going to all select those there and delete. Okay, so a little bit of cleanup with the faces, but a lot easier to delete faces than to work your way around and tidy up. So let's come into UV mapping and I can press the forward slash key to isolate this object. I press A, again, I'll press U and smart UV project and click OK. And you can see with very little effort and a little forward planning into how your house is designed, you can save yourself an awful lot of cleanup. So that's just a quick look at couple of alternatives when you're modeling. Okay, but for the moment, I'm gonna leave it there for this one.